أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهن الأقنة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم نويت تعلم وتعليم ونفع والانتفاع وتذكر وتذكير والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على تمسك بكتاب الله وسنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وصحبه وسلم ودعوة إلى الهدى ودلانة إلى الخير ابتغاء وجه الله وقربه وثوابه أما بعد Alhamdulillah All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Peace and blessings Salawat and salam Upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Especially brought to you for this Special month of Ramadan We will discuss a different topic As compared to our discussions before this Which is relating to advice Relating to marriage and nikah uh, during this Ramadan, we will talk, uh, we will share excerpts from the book Remedy for the Heart in Malay Penawar Bagi Hati, uh, written by uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir bin Abdul Muttalib Al Mandili, Rahimahullah, Wanafa'anallahu bihi wa bi'alumihi fidda raini amin. Remedy to the Heart is such an important topic because. As Muslims, we believe, as believers, our belief is that we will be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our actions. We will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our actions. And we will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all our actions in this life. Our uh, actions that are from our body parts, our limbs, and also our actions, meaning uh, the activities of our heart, what is inside our heart, our thought, what we feel, uh, the things that we feel against our fellow brothers, for example, our bad opinion of people, our thinking that we ourselves are better than other people. These are what I mean by actions of the heart that will also be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. Even though uh, we do not show or display to people, but what is in our hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that too. And we will be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. So to guard and take care of both the actions of our body parts and also the actions of our hearts is very important and more importantly and ulama said that it is an obligation it is also part of fardu'ain to move towards cleansing our hearts from blameworthy traits and so then our iman will increase towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is our uh, fardu'ain this is a fardu'ain, an obligation for all of us to cleanse our hearts and to make sure. Because uh, what is important relating to the heart is that uh, all our actions, ulama say that uh, our actions, our uh, things that we do with our hands, our legs, our eyes, our ears, the source of it is our heart. The source of the actions comes from our heart, not our head. Our head also, when we say our head, uh, it is actually also referring to the heart because uh, spiritually, there is only our heart. Our heart is in charge of our actions. Our heart is the king of all the body parts. So that is one of the most important uh, things that we have to focus on as Muslims ourselves because sometimes we think that we want to better ourselves by learning how to fulfill the obligations of Salat. Uh, 
some people even go to the extent of taking uh, certificates in Islamic studies or diplomas and take degrees and so. But that is not necessarily the case because to improve ourselves first and foremost is to focus on our heart and focus on our actions. Knowledge is part of that journey towards becoming a better Muslim, but uh, it's not everything. Because a lot of knowledge, but you do not act on it, uh, it will be something that is blameworthy to the contrary of what we think that we are trying to become better Muslims by learning a lot of things. So, uh, talking about the basics is about focusing on our actions, especially during this fasting month, this blessed month of Ramadan. The focus should always be to reflect on ourselves. And this does not come by reading books, but this comes by spending our nights in prayer and always focusing on our thoughts and always focusing on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reflecting on our daily actions, reflecting on our behavior, reflecting on our positions, reflecting on our actions. This is the way or one of the most important ways to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the source of our actions, everything refers to the heart. But before we mention matters of the heart, let us first of all look at the outward actions from ourselves, which means the sources of our sins. Of course, the main one is our heart, but our body parts that commit the sins, ulama uh, has arranged it to put as seven, uh, not seven sins, but seven body body parts. The first one are the eyes. The second one are the ears. The third one is the tongue. The fourth one is the stomach. The fifth one is the private parts. The sixth uh, are both hands. And the seventh are both legs or both feet. So these are the only primary doers of sin. So uh, it is mentioned here so that we reflect on each of our body parts. Because when we know the sources of our sins, what are the causes that we identify? Uh, what are the causes of our failures? Our causes of our sins, of course, uh, it will help us better in understanding our own actions and to improve on ourselves as Muslims. And first and foremost, the basis of these actions is we have to remember that these body parts, they will be, they will testify against us, our body parts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Al-Yawma nakhtimu ala afwahihim wa tukallimuna aydihim wa tashhadu arjuluhum bima kanu yaksibun. This day, or the day, Allah refers to Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the hereafter, Nakhtimu ala afwahihim, Allah will seal their mouths and their hands will speak out. And their feet will bear witness, bima kanu yaksibun, onto what they used to earn or what they did. So, the basis of our focusing on our body parts is that in the hereafter, they will be the ones who will testify against us in committing sins. We think that people do not see, but Allah gives here in the Quran a stark reminder of the reality that even though in this life people do not see us do sins, people see us as good persons, people see us as good uh, Muslims, but in the hereafter, we cannot hide anything because our hands will speak, our skins will speak, our hands, our feet will speak and will testify against us if we ever use any one of these body parts to go against or, or to, to, uh, to commit or to go against the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made an obligation for us to stay away from. So the first one that we are reminded is to take care of our eyes. Allah has created our eyes for reasons that benefits us in this world and in this dunya and also in Yawmil Akhirah. In this dunya, referring to uh, the sight, that because of this sight, we are able to walk, we are able to 
to prevent ourselves from mishaps or we can do our daily activities, these are the benefits of the eyes in this dunya. And the benefits of his eyes that brings benefit in the akhirah is we use our eyes to observe the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to look at the skies, to look at the seas, to look at the trees, the forests, and everything and every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in ourselves, and marvel at this very intricate and complex creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this intricate and complex things cannot happen, cannot be around, cannot exist if there is no uh, existing creator. There cannot be something that is created without having the creator. So this is one of the jobs, the duties of our eyes is to be used to observe the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To look at creation, to marvel at the creation of Allah. But of course, when we say creations, we are referring to things that we are allowed to look at. In Yawmil Akhirah, this will also benefit us uh, when we are judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our eyes that Allah has given us. How did we thank Allah? Because as a Muslim, as a believer, we believe that everything is a gift from Allah. Our eyes, our sight is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will ask us for every ni'mah, for every blessing that Allah gives us, Allah will question us every cent from our bank account. It contains thousands, hundreds, and thousands of dollars. Every cent from any amount of money that we have had in this life, how did we spend it? Where did we earn that from? How did we earn it? Will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything, even our eyes, what we used our eyes for to look at other things, uh, these are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will question us for us. And also, the benefits of the eyes that bring us benefit in Yawm al-Akhirah is that with that we read the Qur'an and we make our way towards Majalis uh, al to places that bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for every ni'mat, we must thank Allah. So this is the meaning of shukr. To have shukr in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be thankful to Allah, is not merely by saying alhamdulillah. Uh, that is maybe the surface of being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is more than that, be thankful to Allah. We do not thank our parents by giving birth to us simply by saying thank you and we become really lousy children and do not take care of them and do not do anything for them for the rest of their lives. That is not being thankful to our parents. Right, so the same thing goes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our parents give life to us. Allah gave everything to us. To be thankful to Allah, to be thankful to Allah, to, be, to have shukur in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be thankful to Allah in our actions, not just lip service, because Allah knows what is in our hearts. By being thankful to Allah for the eyes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is to use it for good and not use it for things that has been prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So actually, people who are not uh, blessed with sight, or we can actually say that people who are blessed to have no sight, actually they are safer in Yawm al Qiyamah because they are already saved from a lot of sins. People who have sight, we see everything and we see a lot of things that have been prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to see intentionally or unintentionally. But those who do not have sight, they are actually also blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah has already saved them the trouble they have. Uh, they save really a lot uh, in that matter. And one of the things that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us against in our eyes, in a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, "Inna nazara ila mahasin al mar'a sahmun masmumun min shihami iblis." Verily, uh, to look at the beauty of a woman, someone which is not our mahram. Sahmun masmun min iblis is 
one of the arrows from the arrows of Iblis. Uh, in pop culture, there is this image of uh, falling in love by uh, the arrows of the Cupid. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in Islam, it is not the arrows of the Cupid that makes one fall in love with a woman or like, but it is the arrow of Iblis for one to fall in love through sights by looking at something that is prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sahmun masmumun, an arrow that has been poisoned, one of the arrows of Iblis, faman tarakaha, whosoever lowers his gaze, who stays away, uh, protects, safeguards his eyes from looking at those things. Allah will give him the taste of ibadah. Or in another riwayat, uh, it is mentioned that Prophet Muhammad says, he will taste the sweetness of iman. Yeah? He will taste the sweetness of ibadah, or he will taste the sweetness of iman. Uh, so when someone who wants to taste the sweetness of iman is not merely in doing good because iman, faith, is not simply fulfilling acts of worship. It's not just salat. It's not just zakat. Uh, but a very big part of our actions that will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is how we attempted or how we actually saved ourselves from committing sins from committing things, things that has been prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It needs a lot of faith. It needs a lot of iman. It needs a lot of work too. Because if we, we look at both, we compare between doing acts of worship, it is actually easier than uh, staying away from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter either the heavy prohibitions or even the lightest of prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it takes a lot of work and effort. And if we see that, it is actually much more difficult than simply committing acts of, of worship. And this is relating to the eyes that we have to take care of. So being a Muslim, it's not simply I pray five times a day and I'm a Muslim. It's not just that, but we make sure that every of our body parts, we safeguard it against committing, uh, going against the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To safeguard it is one of the important lessons that we can take from fasting. So besides the eyes, the ears, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for us for benefits in this life and also in the hereafter. Benefits in this life by listening to things that benefit us in this life. We know all that. And in the hereafter, listening to things such as listening to the recitation of Quran, listening to mentions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa or the sayings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Listening to knowledge being shared is also considered an act of worship, an act of ibadah, simply sitting down and listening to what is being spoken relating to religion is something that makes our uh, that increases our act of worship it is considered an ibadah and uh, in comparison between the faculty of sight and also the faculty of hearing the one uh, who is blessed with the unable to see the blessing is bigger than being unable to hear. And for those who are unable to see uh, and hear, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. So uh, the ears, we have to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by trying to make sure that our ears are used to listen to things that bring us closer to Allah. I think this is what most of us are not exposed to most of the time because uh, our environment, our, our ex the exposure to our ears are always when we do not talk, when we do not listen, we listen to music or we turn on the radio, we turn, we turn on things that actually do not benefit us because we remember that everything that goes into our ears or everything that is seen by our eyes, it is like eating 
how it contributes to our body. For example, your consumption, what you eat, what you drink, uh, if it is something that is good, be, uh, nutritious, beneficial, it gives you health, good health, and protects you uh, from illnesses. But what you put into your body, things that are not healthy, especially this Ramadan, with all the, the types of food, from the all groups of food that we take every day in Sahur and also during Iftar, things that are uh, not healthy food, basically like fast food or junk food, it has a negative effect on our bodies. But even though, despite all that, uh, what we go put inside our bodies, it will go out by itself. But what we put into our heart by listening and seeing these images, these things that we hear, these ideas, these bad words, and all the, uh, for example, uh, people who have seen Maksuya, these images will not or will never leave our, our heads and our hearts. Things that we see that are prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This goes into our bodies, goes into our hearts, and it never leaves us forever. Things that we have seen, things that are haram, as compared to what we eat, it goes into our bodies, in a day it will leave us. But things that are haram, things that we see, it goes into our heart. Things that we hear, it goes into our heart. Our behavior is guided by our heart. So to guide our behavior, to guide or especially uh, to upbring our children uh, is to make sure they are not exposed to such things that are available in cartoons and in movies and such stories. Because whatever, you know, we are a product of our environment. Who we grew up with, who our friends were, how our family was, what school we went to. Because everything uh, that we went through, those things that we see, these are the things that shape us to the way that we are now today. Who our friends were, for example, if in our life we have not met anyone who is vulgar, then our words will be protected. If we grew up in an environment where people curse each other or we have friends where people, they curse uh, every day, then it will have an effect on us. Even if we do not curse others, those words will remain in our hearts forever. Things that we see that are prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we grew up, these things will remain in our heart forever. So this is why ulama always maintains the importance for us to lower our gaze and pro pro protect our faculty of fearing. Also, it is as important as going to, com to, to, as important as fasting, as important as praying taraweeh, as important as fulfilling all our obligation towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the eyes, the ears, and also the tongue, the faculty of speech, it is also a blessing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let us reflect where most of us, I think maybe a lot of people fail uh, in this matter in being thankful to Allah for the faculty of speech. Be thankful to Allah for the tongue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Because nowadays, it's not just the tongue, our fingers also, online, social media, and Facebook, and WhatsApp. We, we continue to extend our sins that is supposed to be seen from the tongue or from, the, from our speech. Our fingers also uh, join in in going against the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not taking care of what we speak, even in front of people or behind of people or behind people, with our family members or with our friends. It is something that will bring us trouble in the in the hereafter. And such is the importance uh, emphasized by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith, also our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Those who are able to safeguard, 
what is between their two lips and what is between their hips, they are safe from hellfire. Those who are able to protect. So, uh, the people of wisdom also commands that look at the shape of our mouths. Our tongue is protected by the teeth and the teeth are protected by lips, by our lips, which uh, gives the image that it is supposed to be jailed, it is supposed to be protected so it does not come out. So it should come out. Our speech should always be about good things. So always refrain. Sometimes we try to be funny by saying bad words or something. These are because at the same time, we try to be good Muslims by going to Traway and everything. But these things actually go hand in hand. We do acts of worship, we spend our nights in prayer, we read the Quran, but our tongues do not refrain from speech that hurt others or from speech that are disgusting. And Rasulullah wasallam prohibited us from doing so. So these things go hand in hand by using our tongues to read the Quran. We may read the Quran, but we do not safeguard our tongues from saying bad speech. There is, uh, there is not much benefit from doing it to do, to do good. So we must try to always improve on our acts of worship. And another part, another aspect of our worship, especially in this fast of Ramadan, during the Siyam, during this fast where we keep ourselves uh, from, from being full and satiated, this is one of the best moments to teach, to train our body parts to not go against uh, the teachings of Islam because the nature of our bodies and our spiritual beings is that when our body is full, when our physical body is satiated and full, our limbs our body parts, they become hungry and they do not remain quiet and will want to do things that are prohibited by Allah. But when our stomachs are empty, when we are uh, hungry, uh, when, when our stomachs are empty, that is the point. If we do it properly, our, spir our spirit, our spiritual, our rohania is given the opportunity to grow and our limbs and our body parts become satiated become full, say they do not do bad deeds. So we find ourselves when fasting, uh, we are able to control ourselves better. And that is the point. We have 29 or 30 days every year to teach us so that for the rest of the year, Alhamdulillah, we are in a safe uh, condition until we meet the next Ramadan. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the full benefit from Siam. So we are able to... Uh, put ourselves in the best condition uh, that is possible. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us when we are in a good condition. Our hearts are full of iman and taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are not able to do so in the fast of Ramadan, that means there is something wrong with our fast that we have to reflect and always try to improve on. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim ali wa lakum wa astaghfirullah min qawlin bila amalin subhanak Allahumma bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa antubu ilaik wa sallallahu ala sinna muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh